In this video, I will show you how to find the vertical asymptotes and holes of rational functions. This is AP Precalculus, topics 1.9 and 1.10. If you appreciate this content, please show it by hitting that like button. For each of the following rational functions, determine and label any values of x where the graph has a hole or a vertical asymptote. A rational function will have a hole if a denominator factor cancels out, and it will have a vertical asymptote if a denominator factor remains. So either way we focus on the denominator. We see the x minus 3 in the denominator, and because it cancels out with another factor in the numerator, this means we have a hole. A hole at x equals 3. Then we see the factor of x plus 5. This one does not cancel out with anything. That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. In number 2, the factor of x in the denominator does not cancel out with anything. So that tells us that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. The x minus 1 cancels out with one of the factors of x minus 1 in the numerator. Even though x minus 1 squared means x minus 1 times x minus 1, so we have an extra x minus 1 factor left in the numerator, still it's a whole. So we have a whole at x equals 1 because the factor in the denominator cancels out. Similarly, we have a whole at x equals 2 because this factor cancels out. In number 3, h of x needs to be factored before we can really answer the question. So this trinomial will surely factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared factors as x times x. 6 factors as 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. But inner plus outer must equal middle. To get a negative 1 middle, I need a positive 2x inner and a negative 3x outer. So let's practice our factoring skills on this trinomial. 2x squared will factor as 2x times x. Then we skip over and look at the 2. 2 will only factor as 1 times 2, but it matters the order. Will it be 2 here and 1 here, or will it be the other way around? If there is no GCF in the original problem, there will never be a GCF inside the parentheses either. So that tells me that there will not be a 2 right here. I know it has to be 1 times 2 in this order. Inner plus outer must equal the middle. Inner, I have 1x. Outer, I have 4x. To make a middle of positive 3, I need a negative 1x and a positive 4x. So this gives me negative 1x and this gives me the positive 4x. The 2x minus 1 in the denominator does not cancel out with anything. So that tells us that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 half. That's what we get if we set this equal to 0 and solve. The x minus, sorry, the x plus 2 in the denominator cancels out the x plus 2 in the numerator. That means we have a whole we have a whole at x equals negative 2. For each of the following, write the left and right limit statements for f of x as x approaches 1. With a negative superscript, this means the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x. With a positive superscript, this means the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. So this is what we're looking for. The value of the left and right limit will depend on whether we have a vertical asymptote or a hole at x equals 1. 
If it's a vertical asymptote, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left or the right of f of x will be positive or negative infinity. If it's a whole at x equals 1, then the limit as x approaches 1 from the left or the right will equal a constant, and that constant will be the y value of the whole. Because the x minus 1 in the denominator cancels out with the x minus 1 in the numerator, we have a whole at x equals 1. Around a whole, the limit from the left and the limit from the right will both equal the same constant, and that constant will be the y value of the whole. We can find that y value using the related equation y equals x plus 1 over x plus 4. This is just the same as f of x, but after you cancel out the x minus 1. We know that the x value will be x equals 1. So we can just plug that in to find the y value. So this will become 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 4. In other words, 2 fifths. So the left limit and the right limit are both 2 fifths. For number 5, we notice that the x minus 1 factor does not cancel out with anything. That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 which means that the left limit and the right limit will both be some kind of infinity. To figure out whether it's a positive infinity or a negative infinity, we can make a partial sign chart. For the partial sign chart, we only need the intervals near x equals 1. So from 0 to 2. We need to figure out whether these factors are positive or negative near 1 x minus 1 gives us the 0 of 1. So this is the only factor that might change signs at x equals 1. In fact, this factor is negative to the left and positive to the right. If you need to plug in values to verify that for yourself, you could plug in 0 and see that you get a negative number, and then plug in 2 and see that you get a positive number. None of the other factors will change signs at x equals 1. So it'll either be positive positive or negative negative. To figure out which one it is, for these you can just plug in 1 itself. So if I plug in a 1 to x minus 2, that's 1 minus 2, that's negative. So this will be negative uh, for both intervals near 1. If we plug in 1 for x plus 3, that makes 4, positive 4. So this will be positive, positive. If I plug in 1 right here, I get 1 minus 4, that's a negative 3. So this will be negative for both intervals near 1. What about the overall sign of f of x uh, as x approaches 1 from the left? Well, I have an odd number of negatives, so f of x will be negative. An even number of negatives means f of x will be positive. That means we have negative infinity on the left and positive infinity on the right. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x is positive infinity. The x minus 1 squared in the denominator does not cancel out with anything. So that means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 which also means that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left and right will both be some kind of infinity. To figure out whether it's positive infinity or negative infinity, we can just do a partial sign chart. Set it up like this. We only need the intervals near x equals 1. I'm going to start with the x minus 1 squared because this is the factor that gave us the 0 of x equals 1. This is the only factor that might change signs at x equals 1. All of the other ones will either be negative negative or positive positive. This one is actually going to be positive and positive because it's being squared. If you take a negative number and square it, it's still positive. So this will be positive in both intervals. Negative 2 is a constant, so that's just going to always be negative x minus 7, if I plug in the 1, 
uh, I get one minus set, that's negative six. So that's going to be negative around x equals one. If I plug in the one to x plus five, I get positive six. So this factor is going to be positive near x equals one. The overall sign of f of x will be positive then in both intervals because we have the even number of negatives. This tells us that the limit as x approaches one from the left and from the right of f of x is positive infinity. The graphs of the functions f and g are given below. Use the graphs to find the following limits. Number seven, let's find the limit as x approaches three from the left of f of x. So at x equals three, we have a vertical asymptote. So this limit will either be positive infinity or negative infinity. As we approach the asymptote from the left, f of x is approaching negative infinity. So this limit is negative infinity. As x approaches three from the right, f of x approaches positive infinity. For number nine, we need to find the limit as x approaches two from the left of f of x. So I see at x equals two, we have a hole. So this limit is going to be a constant and it's going to be the y value of the whole. So I already know that the answer is going to be one. That's the limit. It would look sort of like this. As x approaches two from the left, it would be like this. The y values are approaching this y value of one. Now let's do the limit as x approaches two from the right. Well, that's going to be the exact same thing. As x approaches two from the right, we are still approaching this y value where the hole is. So that's going to be one as well. G of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals three. So both of these limits will be some kind of infinity. As x approaches three from the left, G of x is approaching negative infinity. As x approaches three from the right, g of x again approaches negative infinity. For number 13, we need to find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x. So we need to trace this function going to the left. x is approaching negative infinity. What is happening to the y values? Do you see that they are leveling off at this horizontal asymptote? So the y value of this horizontal asymptote is the limit. It's not going any higher than this. So the limit is three. For number 14, we need to find the limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x. So we're going to trace the function heading to the right. And again, we notice that g of x levels out at the horizontal asymptote. So again, this limit will be three. Notice that limits are always y values. See this limit of three? That was a y value of three. This negative infinity, the y values are approaching negative infinity. This negative infinity, a y value. This one, this was the y value of this whole. So the limits are always y values. Keep that in mind. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.